Mandela effect. Now we may go with. Oh, this is gonna look so cool. <laughs> we may go with a pulsing, throbbing effect. As a matter of fact, I've worked it out to where I can do the pulsing, throbbing effect to match the actual sound effect. So as the engine goes up in frequency, in other words, sounding like it's going faster, the pulsing throbbing effect will go faster. Okay, I wanted to touch on a couple of things real quick. Um, this is the forward part of the nacelle, obviously. These detail parts go here. This should be face down. If for any reason this is face up, then your pylons and or pylon assembly is not correct. I wanted to make sure I showed some detail on the engineering forward engineering hull there are going to be some minor gaps you will need to fill so yeah it's a big ship just gonna say it's gonna be big when it's complete this is my hand compared to the engineering hull pretty big make sure I show every part and again more to come alrighty then here is the main engineer main engineering hull and neck of the Daedal Daedalus with some blue tape on it to mask off certain areas and or to hold the pieces together what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to shoot all these parts you see here, the neck, the engineering hull, and the rear of the engineering hull with one coat of ultra matte black, charcoal gray, then a light coat of light gray. Let that cure, and then we'll move on to the next step. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna break all this down and show you how it assembles. I wanna get this primer built up on here because once it cures, I want to sand smooth and clean the edges and the little lines that you see from the printing process. More to come. All right, so here is the main engineering hull painted with two coats of paint. One was dark charcoal gray and one is light gray, which is essentially the same color as the Starship Enterprise. Main engineering hull, forward leading edge of the engineering hull, aft end of the engineering hull, and the neck. Now, I gotta let this cure for a little bit before I do anything else. Then I'm gonna start pulling it apart and show how the assembly goes. So it's nice and easy to understand and see how simple. It's just one, two, three, and successive approximations of one, two, three, four, five, and so on. This is not a difficult model to build. Just follow the instructions and re read the directions. Watch the video. Easy peasy. And here is the main engineering hull. As you can see, I've got a little bit of a gap there. That was unavoidable, unfortunately, but it will be covered. Easy, easy. Now if you see up here close, there are some ridges from the printing process. We're going to go over every inch of this. In fact, the whole reason for the first two coats of primer was to be able to sand all of the main surfaces down and smooth everything out. Now this was two pieces. As you can see inside the kit, most of the pieces are numbered. There's the number eight. And there is the number eight. So eight goes into nine. And this part goes the only place it can possibly go. There is no number, but it's pretty obvious. 
because it will only fit these pieces will only fit one way because as you can see there are tongue and groove tabs everywhere all these parts fit only one way now this part goes here boom and this part goes right there and it's so tight there you go now you've got the main engineering hull together but you don't want to put this rear end cap on until you do your shuttle bay and run your electronics for your shuttle bay and the aft end of the ship proper this is a shuttle bay entrance these are the position designators and these will be either orange or yellow on the outside or red on the outs red or orange on the outside yellow on the inside and the center will be green this is for alignment purposes when you're coming into the shuttle bay <laughs> this is the front the very front there's only one place for this to go and as you can see there's going to need to be a little sanding now what I did this for a reason the primer will fully cure to that PLA or FDM and then I'll sand every aspect of this and then I'll use some 3M spot putty now the primer molecularly bonds to the PLA after it's fully cured it gives you a base for using thin layers of 3M spot putty and you can mask as required and then paint as required after the putty has fully set up and you've sanded everything smooth that enamel gives you a nice hard candy shell for everything to bond to and when you put these thin layers down and sand them down smooth and you hit it with another couple of coats of primer you've got an actually a pretty good finished coat so we'll see more of that as you can see here this is the neck this is the part that goes inside the engineering hull and this holds the pylons right here and here now I stuffed some masking tape down in there and I masked the front of it that goes into the hemisphere which is the forward edge of the ship proper we'll show you more on that and the rest coming up soon okay one coat of charcoal gray then I'll hit it with the coat of this light gray the same color I use on the original series Enterprise same stuff same man channel <laughs> same man time <laughs> alrighty then here we are some more with the Daedalus now let me uh, reiterate something that I said before there is no way you can screw this up all the parts interlock and it should be really easy to figure out which part goes where now as you can see here I've shot these parts with a shot of uh, black charcoal gray primer and then light primer I've sanded them smoothed them aligned them and I'm gonna go ahead and shoot them with another coat of charcoal gray and then light gray then I'm going to shoot some new parts and I'll show them coming up next. Alrighty, so I shot the two halves of the hemisphere, the main primary hull with charcoal gray and then light gray, and then shot the main engineering hull and neck, aft end of the shuttle bay. Let this all dry 15 20 minutes. Then I'm going to pack everything up and take it back to the ward okay while waiting for the paint to dry I'm gonna go ahead and look at some of these other parts as you can see I got a couple of the aft ends of the nacelles in matte black I like these they're kind of a rubberized material 
he gave me one lighter set and one medium set so I'm gonna have to paint them all so I'm gonna go with these aft end parts these black parts also we've got the rear grill in various different colors and materials we've got these for the forward leading edge of the nacelles under behind that go behind the nacelle domes no i am not going to call them bussard collectors that is a term that came out of the next generation etc now we've got these with five three millimeter holes in them one red i guess orange around the outside all depends on what your preference is i'm asking jack to make up some of these with 10 or 12 15 one millimeter holes whichever fits best so i'm waiting on those for lighting uh, i am going to go ahead and do a demonstration with these and i'm going to do a lighting demonstration with these today to show exactly how to make them look really good i'll explain that when i get to that here is the top end the upper portion the bridge dome of the primary hull I'm gonna use a paddle bit and cut this out I think I've got a couple of these that are spares I'm gonna light the bridge so these are about the same diameter this is what I'm going to use for now this is the lower portion of the primary hull this is translucent, doesn't need to be. And the part is starting to fray, which happens with this material sometimes. I'm gonna go ahead and back this up with um, styrene to strengthen it before I put it in place. And those are just a few notes on what's coming up in the construction. Alrighty then, here's that light test. We got yellow red and blue no green that's a board color <laughs> this is going to be the first test now i just wanted to show there's a cold and hot spots as you can see especially as you move the camera the best way to get beyond that is to use a translucent filter what's a nice cheap easy way to make a translucent filter well that's easy any soda bottle any two liter soda bottle simply cut it into one long sheet cut the top and the bottom off cut it up the middle you've got one sheet lay your pattern on it mark around the pattern with a sharpie cut it out with the scissors sand it on both sides put it in behind here and that will diffuse the light make it soft and even and will look much better than these cold and or hot spots there you go <laughs> i just keep getting stronger you know that don't you